you know, we've all gone on Google Maps to look up our own address. And then we look at our street from, you know, the traditional map graphic perspective, then maybe the satellite perspective. Uh, maybe we've turned it, you know, into a 3D kind of perspective with that satellite. And then finally, we've maybe gone to the street view of our, you know, house or apartment building in which you can even move along the street up or down or whatever to get a sense of, you know, what your neighborhood looks like. But in all of these instances, using a map is inherently different than actually being in the place. It is just a representation of that place. Now in D&D, we use maps in similar ways as, as in the real world to give us a sense of the greater world and the destinations between, you know, settlements or geographic locations, you know, to find our way to those specific locations and to give us information about places, you know, treasure map is an example or whatever, and these can become coveted. But since in D&D, the players can never really be in the world, maps provide the functionality of actuality. What can the characters see? What are their obstacles in front of them? You know, how far apart are things in space? This is all done using maps. And as we'll see, the same map can serve to provide information to the players about the world and provide them with the sense that that world is actual. It's real. Hello again, KR King here, back once again with my YouTube channel dedicating to helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So in this episode, I'm going to be creating an encounter map that goes along with the uh, long-running conflict that I've been doing in a series of episodes. I'll be using the Dungeon Draft software that I've used before to make maps. I'll provide a link to that uh, in the description. And as I said, I'm going to create two versions of the same map. The idea is that one version will give the players a general idea of the village of Rodenburg. The town's layout, the structures, who lives where, a sense of how far apart things are. And this is a map that they would use when traveling to the town to prepare themselves. They're not just going to stumble into town. But then we'll use a same map to create the actuality of Rodenburg. That is, that within the mechanics of the game, the classic battle map. Okay, a point of order here in terms of an old GM tactic that you use to keep the players on their toes. When you have a situation that players expect is going to be a theater of the mind sort of role-playing situation and you pull out a battle map, whether it's, you know, the, the grease pencil map in a tabletop game or a digital map in an online game, the players are like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I, I thought we were just going to talk our way through this. And it's sort of like the old tactic of rolling a bunch of dice behind a screen and a tabletop or, you know, the, the ghost images of them, you know, in the chat box uh, in Fantasy Grounds where suddenly the players are like, what is, why are they rolling dice? What's going on here? And the same thing when you have a, you know, map of the tavern and you say, okay, where is everybody? And you start putting out tokens or figures if it's a grease pencil map. And this creates tension. It creates excitement. Something real is happening. Now again, you don't want to just use this every time because then the players, first of all, why are we doing all this if nothing is going to happen? You want to have a situation where there might be if the players screw up, uh, there's a surprise here, there's some sort of situation where someone's going to run away or something and you need to know how far apart they are. And again, in this situation in Rodenburg in this tavern, if the players misbehave or cause trouble and there is some kind of battle, you know, it's going to have implications. They went into town trying to be secretive. All right, so we're going to bring up dungeon draft and we're going to open the file uh, that we did before this is the village it's loading the defaults assets including the ones from the two minute tabletop so there's the uh the file that we made notice how large this the reason was i had to go to the maximum 128 by 128 because i was trying to scale this to an existing map to get a sense of how big uh these uh, buildings should be in relation to this. And if you bring up trace image here, and I bring that back up, there's the map I used. Now it got off a little bit, but I can move that around and kind of get it. And that's how I line that up. You know, I didn't do it exactly. And that's where I put these buildings that I got in this tabletop. Now, the thing about this is, I'm going to go back out like this. This is our basic map. Uh, when I'm going to create this for, you know, like Fantasy Grounds or whatever, I'm not going to have these roofs on these buildings, right? 
the reason I put these here, I can use this as an informational map. So if I take the grid off, right, now we have this map here, and this can be useful to give to the players. If somebody gives them a map of this little village before they go, uh, they can have a sense of where the buildings are, how to approach the village. It isn't like you're just wandering in and you're in an encounter in Fantasy Grounds, for example. They have this file as a map. And what that can mean is it has labels on it. And they have this text feature over here uh, in Dungeon Draft. Uh, so I'm going to create, let's say, this tavern here. If I say this, uh, what's going to be my font? I think it's got to be a little bit bigger. Let's say 125. And I say, give me, and I type, Tavern. Okay, and as you can see, it's Libre Baskerville. I can pick these from these. If I click on these, they change to those. Uh, I'm just kind of doing these uh, caveat bold here. And you can go through this. Uh, eh, that's kind of cool. Let's make that a little bit bigger. All right. And if you want to move it around, you go up to here to move. Select it. They always have that cross. You know, if you want to put it on there, but as you can see, it doesn't show very well. Uh, that should be pretty obvious. And again, you want to change the color on this. You just pick. Now, if I pick color, there we go. I have to be in the edit mode to do that. Oops, I have to go like that and then size. Is that right? There we go. All right. You can also, let's say you did want to move that onto here or you needed to have it in this kind of thing you can put a text box around it i'm going to say on pick the color uh white is okay and oops i gotta be an edit to do that on there we go and uh, this is the border the border width you can make that much bigger let me zoom up on that a little bit here all right zoom up back to text uh, again, the width, however big or small you want to make that. Uh, you go to move. Now you can put that if you want to put it right on there. And again, you can change this color. But you're probably not going to want that. So I'll say background color like that. So I might want to start identifying what these structures are. Uh, I'm going to speed this up a little bit here. So Jaslyn, she kind of leads the town. Her uh, main rival is Cyrus, richest guy in town. And I'm going to have this as his warehouse where he stores his wine. Uh, make that a little bit smaller there, fit that in. Let's see, you're going to need a blacksmith. Every town has one. Uh, a livery, stonemason, and cooper to build barrels. And here's where you have the shanty town, the poor people, and over here, the merchants of the town. All right, so I've identified everything on my map. Now I'm ready to export that. Uh, you can do ping, PNG, or JPEGs. Uh, so I'm just gonna say export. I'm at 70 pixels. That should be fine for our purposes, but of course you can make that lower or higher if you want, let's say 80. What it's gonna do is tell you the how big this is. Now again, we have this giant file that I had in order to match the uh, the size of my original drawing. So I'm just going to say export. And then once it's done, it will bring up the uh, folder that it's been saved in, which is kind of a nice feature because you know that it did it successfully you don't, and you don't have to search for it. All right, and there it is, village info. If I click on that, there's the file. All right, now the one thing is, because of the size I had to make this in order to get this, the grids to match for my Fantasy Grounds uh, program, I've got a lot of extra stuff out here. So maybe I want to get rid of that. And one of the things I do, you can open this up in GIMP. This is this free photo manipulation program. I've, I'll put a link down in the description. I've used it many times before. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I am going to use the Crop tool. And I'm just going to crop this. Like so. Now I just have the relevant information that the players are going to need. And I'm going to overwrite village info. And just overwrite that PNG file. 
And then when we go to this file now, it is now this size. And that's manageable. You send that to the players, they have a sense of what the town is. Now, back in the program, even if I, you know, if I have the grid on, again, the five foot squares, I've got these indicators, but what I want in terms of playing the game is to see inside these structures, right? You'll have line of sight and whatnot, but you're not gonna see the, the roofs. Well, what you can do is, you can go to your layers, your level setting, and you can create a clone level of the ground. And I'm gonna call this, uh, yeah, I'll just say buildings. Except, so now I have an identical level. So what do I not need on this level? What I don't need are labels. So I'm just going to get rid of those. All right, and I've done that, and I'm showing buildings. If I go to the ground, there they are. It's all still there. But on my buildings level, those are gone. And I am not going to need these structures. But I want to draw on here. I want to have them the same size. So I'm going to leave those up and I'm going to use my building tool. I'm going to build a structure here. I guess these are stone walls because they're taking everything from the stone that's all around here. And I'm going to just say here, there. Okay, I've got, now I've got my structure and I can just go and delete, delete. If I go back to the ground, it's all still there. Now on the buildings thing, which is what I'm gonna use in Fantasy Grounds, I've got my tavern. Okay, so I have my basic structure of my building here. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is make entrances and windows. I go to my design uh, portal, and I'm gonna put a door, and of course I have snap. I can either be on or off wherever I wanna do that. Uh, I will create maybe a double door there. No, and then I can control Z if I don't like it. There and there. I'll have a door back here. Probably that's it. Then of course windows to let some light in. And I'll make those symmetrical like so. Maybe one here and here. And one back here, and like so. I'm gonna have a couple rooms, there we go. All right, then I'm gonna divide, this is gonna be my main area, the tavern itself where the patrons are, and then back here I'm gonna have a kitchen, so I'm gonna divide that with walls. I'm gonna use wood walls inside the building. And I'll have one that goes across. And then I'll divide this. Maybe I'll turn the snap off and sort of divide it like that. Notice you can then make it angled when it's not on snap. So I got two rooms. And if you decide, oh, I'm not sure about that, you can go edit points. And if you hover over a point and hit delete, it goes away. So let's say I'm actually gonna, because I'm gonna have this as a store. One is a storage and one is a kitchen. So I will, like so. All right. And then, of course, I have entrances there. So I will make in here again. I'll have a double door. What the heck? And I will have one there one and there. All right, so now I've got the basic structure, all the portals, all the, the windows and whatnot. I can start building uh, the actual interior. So I go to my objects tool. Now again, I'm thinking about how is this gonna be in terms of the players going in and these five foot squares, where is everything situated? Who might they meet or whatever? Again, I'm creating the tension of an encounter with this tavern, but thinking it might just be role playing. All right. So we're going to go to our list here. The first thing I want to get is a bar. Here we go. And if alt, I can bring it up or down. Then just rotate with the rot with the mouse without the or the mouse rotate. And then alt again. And then at the other end, I think what I will do, I will create a fireplace here. And how big do I want to have that? Eh. Well, we got these windows which are up above 
So now we want to put tables in here, right? I think I'm just going to do this sort of wooden table. Rotate that. Uh, and then, so it's basically going to 5 feet by 10 feet. So I'll say 1. I need 5 feet to sit on. 2. Actually, I'm going to go like this. Three sets of tables. And then maybe... You know, some round ones, smaller ones over here, chairs. Uh, now, this is interesting. So, if I want to put these chairs in here, I zoom up, and I'm going to fit three. I'm going to turn my snap off. One, two, three, four, five, six. When you say selection, if I go like this, notice it'll select. I can select everything. I can scale it up or down. I can move it. I can rotate it, whatever I want to do. So if I did this, if I just created this and I went like this and I say control C, control V, I've got another one that I can put. Control V, I got another one, right? This is kind of a nice feature that you can use on your tags. I'm going to make some chairs in here. How comfortable would these chairs be? Let's see, uh, these are going to be around the. Uh... Alrighty. And then we've got our little chairs here as well. Now I've got that set up. Uh, I've got to put some stuff in here, some barrels. So I'm going to pick this, rotate that into position. Uh, the standard size of this is about two and a half. So each five foot square, it should be a little bit smaller, maybe uh, 0.22, something like that. 0.25, let's say. All right, like so. Control CV. Oops. Move this out a little bit, okay. And of course, we might have barrels in storage, and you could. Let's see, I'll make that a little bit bigger. A trap door here. and have an underground section, a fruit cellar, or some kind of storage area. So I'll just leave that there for now. Okay, so then I'm going to do my kitchen. We have an oven. And then I'm going to need some tables in here that they work on. You know, where they prepare the food. You know, you need a lot of workspace. And then we're going to have some storage. And we will... Put some sacks. All right, so now I've got that ready, uh, and I could add some light sources. Oops, I got an extra one over here. But that is pretty much ready. I can put people in this place. I can populate it with all sorts of people when the players enter. So there you have. Uh, two aspects of map making, the information and actuality, using the same map for the village of Rodenburg. So next, I'm going to create an encounter map in the Barren Hills. The players are going to go 10 miles in and 10 miles out. They're going to have an encounter. And I'm going to talk about how this map can reflect both the tactics of the creatures encountered and their relationship to the environment that they live in or are wandering through. And if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more. Leave comments. I love to read them. But as always, my friends, keep playing Dungeons & Dragons and tell somebody else about it.